All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start. Sorry, I know the other one ran over late a little bit. Uh, we're about 10 minutes behind. I think I have about 62 slides to get to. I know they just threw a lot of info at you. I'm also going to throw a lot of info at you. Um, if you ever go to a SANS course, they call it drinking from the fire hose. I wish I had a photo of it, but imagine a fire hose coming at you with a lot of water, and that's the information. Um, this is going to be a little bit upper level. Um, a lot of stuff goes into why we should monitor for stuff that just happened. My name is uh, Christopher Peacock. Disclaimer, my opinions are not that of my employers. Uh, who am I? I am a threat hunter, I'm a consultant, and I'm an analyst for Raytheon. We work for major companies. Um, we're contracted out to go hunting them, consult for them, and try to help make them more secure. We work with critical infrastructure and other things such as that nature. We're going to go over the kill chain today. There's seven steps in the kill chain. You have recon, weaponization, delivery, exploitation, installation, command and control, and then actions on objective. What is a kill chain? Simply put, it is military steps to attack a target. I came from a background where I was a defensive coordinator at high school locally. Uh, when I first started coaching, I was a linebacker coach. The opponent of a linebacker is a running back most of the time. So my coach made me learn the running back position as well. A lot of times in defense, we forget that we have to understand offense to properly defend. Uh, I know in our community, a lot of people don't like football. I love football still. And I'll tell you this, I wouldn't go out and hire a defensive coordinator that didn't know how an offense worked. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna, hey man, how are you gonna stop that 32 trap or, or an ISO play? It's not how offense works, why are you gonna do defense then? So we need to do a better job about educating ourselves on the offense. First off, this reconnaissance stage. At, at this stage, hackers are going to go out, they're just going to get everything they can on you, and they'll figure out how to use it later. This is just, you know, if you're doing an investigation, this is, I'm going to collect as much info as I can, then we'll see how it ties together and how we can use it. Attackers gather information before they attack. They use the internet by, call, they use the internet, uh, by searching it and calling employees emailing, and dumpster diving. Recon tools, these are some of the common ones. There's a list of uh, some on Kali. Shodan and Census are good. Nmap and Zinmap, Zinmap's the GUI if you don't like. Uh, command line, vulnerability scans, FOCA, email lists, passwords and phone lists, job boards, and social media as well is a big one. Uh, I've heard y'all seen Shodan today. Hopefully y'all actually will go out and get an account. Uh, I was able to sign up on Black Friday, it's like five bucks instead of 50, so mm, if you have the money, go ahead and spend it. If you're a little on the cheap side, wait till Black Friday comes around again, you'll get a lifetime membership. It's pretty easy. We did uh, TalGov up here. Uh, we ran a search. As you can see, it looks like they're running checkpoint firewalls. Um, so we're already at a good start right here. We know what's at their edge, right? So how can you use it though as a defender? Search yourself. See what the attacker sees. Uh, you know, know thyself, know thy enemy. You have to know yourself because if the enemy knows you better than you know yourself, you're in trouble. So like we did here with talgov.com, search for your public domains, search for your public IP address spaces. There's an example, you can do a slash 16. Um, what is it, this is uh, FSU. Came to FSU, so I figured I'd throw them up there. Uh, that's always good. Uh, the other one is image search is fun. You can use this. And this is terrible. I did Tallahassee. Here's RDP open to the internet. If you didn't know, these go on the black market for like three to five dollars a pop access to these. People can combine them. They'll brute force them. If it's uh, maybe like an XP we have like right here, um, you might not have to brute force it. Probably because you use an exploit on it. <laughs> So we got XP with RDP, that's not good. Please don't let that be your organization. Uh, we have usernames, you can see usernames. I was just searching Tampa and I actually found, uh, it looked like our news station had um, one of these open with like eight usernames up there. Uh, yeah, that was interesting. And then uh, we got families pool. If you know these people, please tell them to get their camera off the internet <laughs> because um, yeah, some creepos could be watching their kids or whatever. That's that's just not good. So, oh my, like this just shouldn't be out there. Moving on, since this is just another alternative, uh, you can analyze things that are on the internet, servers, what have you. 
And there's a 8.8.h with a WAC 24. Sorry, I'm old school. I got taught to say WAC instead of slash old network habits. That's just uh, Google. Moving on to another one we can do ZenMap or InMap. Attackers will scan you. They will try to figure out your infrastructure. What do you need to do? Scan yourself. Scan yourself from the outside. Scan yourself from the inside. See if you can catch those scans, all right? See what you're running. Know your threat landscape. Know what you're running. There again, your threat surface. See what it is. Maybe you find something you didn't know. Maybe you're like, hmm, that's interesting. I didn't know that our firewall team opened up that port on our firewall, and now we have something that I don't even know is running right there. Make sure you're doing that. And make sure you can detect your scans. External vulnerability scans, these are huge. Um, we actually had a client, so they had a publicly accessible device and an exploit came out, or a vulnerability came out for it. The vulnerability came out for it, a patch was released. They didn't pick up that a patch was needed for it. About two months later, a Metasploit module came out for that. Within two days of that Metasploit module, for that hack, for that vulnerability coming out, that device was owned. We have to be more vigilant on this stuff because attackers are now able to leverage Shodan. They can API in and they can find those devices. It's really easy if you get an IP list, take that, then port it into Metasploit or whatever you're going to use. Make sure you're running these. I don't care which tool you use. Pick a tool, run with it. Just do it though. That's the big thing. WPS scan, it's a comprehensive WordPress scanner. I can't tell you how many times I've seen scans or malware or emails, anything come from a, a <coughs> WordPress server, WordPress site that got hacked and now hackers are just using it to pivot off of and get things going. If you have WordPress, if yes, please run this. This is an extra security uh, check. Make sure that you're up to date with everything. Excuse me. Audit your network devices, your, your edge network devices with credential scans. These are going to be your first line of defense, all right? A lot of times it can even be a router before your firewall. Make sure you're doing that. This is a Cisco Smart Install vulnerability. Uh, we ran a show in the search for it. As you can see, there are 46,000 in the United States alone. Just in case you missed that number. Audit tools, uh, RAT, it's free. Um, go ahead, run that if you want. Tenable. Make sure you're doing credential scans though, so that they can see everything. Cisco. If you're a Cisco shop, they have an awesome. They have two awesome tools out now: Cisco Analyzer and Active Advisor. Uh, if you pay for support, most likely you are um, you're going to be able to get access to those. And also, another thing you can do is with your firewall vendor or your edge, whoever it is, any appliance. Honestly, if you have a rep that makes money off of your butt. That rep wants to keep you happy, all right? Talk to that rep, maybe they can get in and they can come in, they, they, they'll get someone from the company flying down, you know, if you're a big enough spender, and they'll let you, they'll let you sit down and go over stuff with them, all right? That's great, you can, you can sit there and talk, make sure you're, you're doing what you should do with those devices. FOCA, fingerprinting organizations with collected archives. Pretty much, run on your domain, find if anything is of interest, and then ask yourself, WWHD. What would hackers do? All right, we need to start thinking more like hackers because that's who's our, that's who our opponent is. As you can see, this is a nice GUI for it. You can look up documents, username, emails, passwords. It'll go out. It'll search for you. Use that data to your advantage. See what an attacker would see. See if there's anything that you need to be prepared for. Email list: skydin.info and hunter.io. Those are both two good email lists that attackers will use, and so will mouse man. Like I said, they, they are used by attackers. They are used by mouse man. Be more aggressive if you find out that some of your emails are out there, because guess what? If they're on these lists, they're going to be more susceptible to attacks. Um, there's just an example. Pretty easy. It's kind of like Google. I mean, type it and go. Find what you have. Have them pwned. If attackers know what emails you, they just found, maybe they can go and they can find passwords. They'll run it through Have I Been Pwned, it tells them what list that password is on, then they can go and try to find that, maybe it's on a LinkedIn uh, breach or anything. <coughs> Password reuse is very common, so we all know that, that's been hammered into our heads. 
We can sign up our domain bill on Have I Been Pwned. It's real easy. Search for your accounts in your domain. There's the page for it right there. You go to the home page and then you click on that tab. You can sign up your domain. The only thing is you have to make sure that you yourself uh, are the mail admin, which is good because I don't want someone else signing up my domain. Job boards. Please, please, please use generic terms on job boards. All right, when I say generic, let's say next generation firewall. Don't tell me you're running uh, a checkpoint or uh, ASA. Tell me you're running IDS IPS, cool. If you have experience in IDS IPS, awesome. We can talk about that in the interview. Inter Enterprise AV experience. Don't tell us what AV you're running. LinkedIn experience is also a tell. Um, I don't have a, a more, I don't have any more depth in the slide on that. But just go out there and type in like, Type in uh, Cisco ASA, and then you'll be able to find some organizations where someone says, hey, I was the network engineer and I managed Cisco ASAs at this organization. Well, guess what that organization's running? ASAs, awesome. Now I know if I have an exploit for ASAs, it might work there. Here's an example, all right? Here's a job post and we can see lots of uh, things up in here. Okay, so I go to my friend if I'm on a red team and I say, hey Will, can we make it past Cisco Firepower? Sure, we got Cobalt Strike C2 with Jitter, all right? Hey Chip, can we make it back past Symantec and it won't catch it? Sure. Oh, by the way, we see that they also run Trend Micro. That won't catch it either, right? All right, now we can set this up in our lab and make sure we won't get caught when we get in there. Don't give more information away to an adversary than you need to. Other tools, we're not really gonna go over these. There's none of these exist. This will be up later if y'all want to. Go back, research them on your own time. There's some good stuff in there. Pay spin is definitely worth uh, checking out every now and then for your organization. Make sure you don't have any emails leaked with passwords. Things to ensure, two-factor VPN, two-factor everywhere, two-factor on your email, two-factor, two-factor, two-factor. I can't say it enough. Sometimes people will be like, hey, we have two-factor. All right, cool. Hey, I just found this email server that, that you're running this email login for this other service that's single factor. That, like, come on. Lockdown public facing AD integrated services such as Skype, Link for Business, however you want to call it, Adobe Connect, anything that has AD on the outside. ADFS for Azure. Do proper guidance on this. Uh, they just released something last March, March 2018, about how to actually. Uh, lock this down more and how to help uh, prevent brute forcing um, or password spray. If you type in password spray with ADFS, and it'll come up, uh, go a little read, tells you about how to more or how to lock it down more securely. Definitely look into that. So that brings us around to weaponization at step two. This is coupling an exploit with a back door. There's not a whole lot we can do there. This is more where an attacker doesn't interact. They might be choosing their pay, like, they're gonna choose their weapons of choice pretty much. Maybe it's a Microsoft Office document that they're gonna have macros enabled on. There's, two, there's a few security controls. Pretty much we need security awareness at this point. You know, they're out developing stuff. We, they're, they're working up, we need to work up. Considerations, focus on do, reducing their weapons. That goes back to vulnerability management. Endpoint hygiene is huge. Vulnerability management, that's because that's a part of reducing the weapons and patch management. We gotta find the vulnerabilities, patch them, that in turn reduces the weapons. Security awareness training, that's huge because a lot of it does go through the end user. Delivery. Delivery is weaponizing a bundle to the victim via email, web, or USB. A lot of times we know that's email. These are all social engineering attacks. Phishing is the most common one. Pluggable media, we all hear about pen testers dropping USBs in parking lots. Web browsing, that's a common one. Vishing, maybe they get called. There's a famous one, you know, hey, I'm Microsoft and we just found that you have an AV, or you just have an AV signature go off on your computer. Can you please go to this one website for me? Don't do that. Uh, so what are ways we block this? Because I don't want it in my house. Use email security gateways. Microsoft Forefront, FireEye, Cisco, I don't care which one, pick some. Pick one, pick two, pick three, layer them up, all right? I've seen stuff still get through about three to four email gateways. That's insane. As I tell you, there's not a proper one out there, <laughs> all right? It still gets through. So what do you have to do? 
Deny all other sources of email, okay? Don't have Gmail, don't have Yahoo, don't have Hotmail. I don't care what it is. Didn't you just pay for that nice shiny device that you got? Didn't you just pay for Proofpoint or for whoever? Why did you spend all that money if you're only gonna cover part of it? And then you're gonna leave them open for phishing through Yahoo, Gmail, and Hotmail, which you most likely don't even know what's going through there because you're probably not running HTTPS decrypt. All right? When you fish, inform your users that you will be fishing them. They don't like it when they're surprised. Give them a heads up, all right? Tell them we're gonna start this next quarter or something. All right, training programs. Do not try to inflate your training metrics. I've seen this time and time again. On our second time around, no one clicked our phishing link. That doesn't make sense. Training was so effective. This doesn't work though. If anything, you need to be fishing harder and harder and harder. Because if you aren't, then someone else is. So. Also, you have leverage a report phishing button. There's some free ones on GitHub now. Uh, some are included with some of the mail suites now. Go ahead and look at that. Let them report back, and then you can use those to write new gateway rules because they are getting through. So blocking email delivery, credential phishing, commodity malware, we all know is huge. Write custom rules, especially if they've got reported phishes and they made them through your email uh, security, then write new rules to catch it, all right? Or if maybe you don't have a shop where you're able to do that, kick it off to whoever manages your stuff. You know, if it's Cisco, kick it off to Cisco. If it's Microsoft, kick it off to Microsoft. Say, hey, this got through, all right? They got teams that'll do that for you. Quarantine public facing email addresses, hr at yourdomain.com, whatever they are, we all have them. Go ahead and quarantine. If you, have, if, you, if you have enough people, go ahead and quarantine so that they can take a look at those because those are really gonna get attacked a lot. People just send garbage there all day. Use DMARC with SPF, DKIM. Um, that's just gonna be protection to make sure that you aren't getting spoofed domain stuff. Hey, this came from myorganization.com. No, it didn't. That came from hotmail.com, but you somehow spoofed it right. All right, let's set up that. Set P to quarantine so that we're quarantining those and they're not getting you can set it up, and then if it still gets to the user, what does it matter? So quarantine it or reject it. All right, we're gonna move on to web browsing and net, uh, network traffic. Run full SSL decryption. You have IDS, IPS, DLP solutions. Guess what? 60% of traffic, 40 to 60% in your environment. Probably, it's getting up probably closer to 70s now. If you're not doing it, then all these nice tools right here that you paid for, they're not gonna, they're not gonna work. So why, why do we, either why do we buy them or we need to figure out how we can fully utilize them by actually getting the necessary traffic and the necessary data it needs. Leverage URL filtering to block bad sites, all right? Leverage DNS uh, security to block categories. You can do this both levels. Uh, layers in depth, we want to block URL categories, we want to block DNS categories. Uh, especially, look at doing dynamic DNS. People don't know that dynamic DNS is a huge one to block. Why? Because an attacker wants to set up at Starbucks, and then afterwards he wants to go to Whataburger, all right? And he wants to hop on the Wi-Fi at different spots. What is he using to do this for his C2? He's using dynamic DNS. What reputable company is gonna use dynamic DNS? No reputable company I know is going to, all right? Let's block it. Also uncategorized. Why are your users going to uncategorize or new domains? Like take the Alexa top whatever, 100, 500. If they're going outside of that <coughs> scope, maybe they should put in a help desk ticket if they want to go to that site, because it's probably kind of sketchy. Leverage application filtering. Block all applications and then let's start to allow the applications that we actually want out, all right? You shouldn't have SMB going out, I can tell you that much. Exploitation, step four. We're gonna look at actually exploiting a vulnerability. Metasploit is a huge one. We're gonna look at how to stop it, countering common phishing attacks, also um, known as commodity malware. Metasploit right now has over 3,000 plus modules. The exploits they have are known exploits. What do we need to do to stop it? Vuln scans and patch, like I told y'all earlier. A patch came out for the company that, that got hacked, all right? A patch came out for it. They hadn't patched. Once it got onto Metasploit, within two days, they were hit, all right? Patch your stuff, and then you kill their known exploits. <coughs> Reduce your attack surface. 
Sure, can they still build payloads that have to get to the end users, then your users have to click buttons? Okay, yeah, that's still a possibility. But at least there's multiple things along the way there, where beforehand, if it's just facing out there and there's an exploit for it, boom, you're, you're done. WannaCry. WannaCry ransomware attack. Losses could reach $4 billion. Why did I put this up here? Exploit was a known exploit, all right? We had known it for a while. There were workarounds that were known, and a patch was released. Why $4 billion? For one, we're terrible at upgrade legacy systems. For two, we're terrible at patch management, and we're terrible at endpoint hygiene. Metasploit has a GUI. You can use Armitage. Look at that. Attack. What do I want to attack? SMB. What exploit? That exploit. Boom. This isn't, this isn't good because people like 13 year olds can just, they can get on there and they can launch a Hail Mary attack on you if they want to. You don't want a kid launching Hail Mary attacks on you when your security's not up to par and you haven't patched your edge stuff. Exploit kids, they used to work in this way. You used to either get an email or you went to a website and they went to another website and the website checks, it's able to actually check multiple things. Uh, what version of Flash you're running what version of a um, browser you're running, they can check multiple things and they can execute. These have been fading out a lot now. Um, and now they're going to these new ones. The big thing is with these is in, in user training and patch management. Patch management is linked under import hygiene. Let's be patched. Is AV good? Is it actually checking back to your management console? All right, if it hasn't checked in in a month, uh, has that user been at work every day? Yeah. Oh, their AV hasn't checked in for a month. Hmm, I wonder what turned that off. That could be interesting. Make sure your AV signatures are up to date too. If you're paying for it, make sure it's up to date. I say audit this bi-weekly, maybe monthly, maybe weekly, depending on your team, but make sure you're checking. Is AV good in reporting? Are the signatures up to date? Otherwise, we need to get it fixed and we need to get to other uh, things. We need, we need to get it fixed so that we can properly go on to other things, such as this. Your sniff commodity malware. I highlighted this. That's a PowerShell script that it uses to download a payload, all right? What you'll see here, Emotet, commodity malware. These are the two most popular right now. What is that? PowerShell script, outbound for payload. We're using PowerShell. They're living off the land. This is an example of Emotet. As you can see, it's using, um, it's not going to tell you what it's doing right here. You have to go back and decode it. Down here, you can see that it's calling out to the internet, all right? It's going out to URLs. So what can we do? Endpoint protection. Why are my office apps launching PowerShell? That's a terrible idea. Don't let it happen. Leverage that, block it, kill it. Now it doesn't launch PowerShell. What else can we do? Post-based firewall. How about I block PowerShell from making outbound connections? But Chris, that's too administrative. All right, cool. You have to manage your environment, I get that. How about we block it to all, everything outside your environment? You're not gonna be PowerShelling out? The only that's gonna be doing that are examples of malware and the guys who just presented. <laughs> Installation, five, install malware on assets. All right, this is getting more and more, tr this is getting harder and harder. You're gonna gain persistence, they're going to do either a file installation or a file list installation. All right? The whole objective of this stage is to get to C2. File base used to be easy. Well, it used to be hard. Now it's getting easier. Prevent. You want to prevent the rights to disk. How do you do it? Import hygiene. Once again, AV is checking in. Patches are done. We have software audits for application whitelisting. All right? Chris, isn't pat application whitelisting hard? It used to be hard because you had to go out and you had to get 5,000 applications listed and you did this at the end of the year before your audit and you went through each one and you said yes, yes, why does two computers have this one application on it, all right? It used to be hard. Most AV suites now have reputational score, all right? What is our reputational score? Hey, we're a uh, we're big AV company, 50,000 endpoints have this application. Okay, cool, we'll go ahead and allow that. We're a big AV company. Hey, we just checked the hash on that and only two other computers in the whole world have that hash. Mm -hmm. All right, well, whatever reputation that is, let's 
Let's quarantine that then. We don't want it on our network. That's highly suspect. All right, go ahead and set it. Your administrative cost goes down huge. Why? You've pushed that administrative cost onto them instead of yourself. Okay, that's great. <coughs> File list, this is getting tough. PowerShell right here. This just came out a few weeks ago. Originally, it was for um, doing an open S SSL uh, reverse shell on Linux. My friend sent it over to me, a uh, shout out to Jeremiah Best, great guy. Um, and then I was like, dude, that's Linux. I hate Linux. Who's gonna own Linux boxes? Like, that's for like after they get past phishing the end user. And uh, this lady, Carrie Roberts, she works at uh, Walmart. She's a red teamer or pen tester at Walmart. She took that whole thing and she wrote it into PowerShell. So now you have OpenSSL, reverse shell from PowerShell out. It's insane. In memory, you have Empire, Cobalt Strike, Power Exploit, Meta Exploit, Interpreter. These are getting harder and harder to catch, especially uh, especially Cobalt Strike. It's got um, Power Pick, which is insane. It's got MyEagle C2s. It's crazy. How are they doing it? They're living off the land. They're using PowerShell. They're using WMI, PS Exec. They're migrating to C Sharp now. Um, they talked about that briefly earlier. The big thing is, is that's that's the stage of which is coming. That's what they're going to as red teamers. And the the terrible thing is, is most places can't even catch PowerShell in their environment. They cannot catch um, commodity malware PowerShelling around. AV doesn't cut anymore. 77% of those attacks utilize exploits or fileless techniques. What do we need? We need EDR solutions, endpoint detection and response. If you want to catch those guys who just talked about their special ways that they, that they get around an environment, you need EDR so they can start picking up on some of the stuff they're doing. All right, you need an EDR solution. Hopefully compliance will catch up because otherwise we're going to get our butts handed to us. Commodity is going to get their stuff on it soon, and once they start doing C sharp and commodity, I'm going to be a busy man. I'll tell you that, but I'll get paid. That's good. I like that. <laughs> man, I'll have work for days. So now we're moving on to C2. We got the payload down. We executed it. We installed it. What can we do as defenders at C2? We can look to catch DNS tunneling. There's long streams. You can look up how to do that. There's good sans paper on it. I guess IPS can catch beacons. I've seen some catch. Uh, uh, some of the um, cobalt strike beacons before. You can block dynamic DNS. That's real lower tier stuff. Any good person's going to do a static one. They'll probably have like, a static uh, cloud bucket or whatever that they go to. Uh, block new domains, newly seen domains. That kind of helps with a lot of the ransomware. Some of the ransomware would go out to see if it could talk to the domain. If it couldn't, then it would shut down. Uh, manual C2, though, is really hard to catch. Um, like if, if they're actually running well with cobalt strike, my T C2 is hard to catch. And lateral movement creates more noise, all right? Actions on objectives. This is where they've got everything. They now have their command prompt up. What are they doing to move into your environment? This goes into their whole last talk, all right? Enumeration, lateral movement, and data exfiltration. They're going to enumerate the host that they're on. They went into that. Uh, who am I exe? You should probably monitor that usage in your environment. You want to know who's running who am I, all right? Lateral movement, uh, they're just getting around trying to find the crown jewels and once they get there, they're going to try to figure out how to exfiltrate the crown jewels. Uh, some of the tools, Kerberos, Mimikatz, Bloodhound, Responder, Golden Ticket, Pass the Hash, Empire, Living Off the Land. Just familiar yourself with these. We don't have enough time to go into it today. Make sure you are aware of these. Go home, look at it. Study the offensive playbook. Why do we study the offensive playbook? So we can be better as, at defending, OK? We need to be better at defending. The only way we're going to get better is if we understand the offense. All right, so we're back here. If we can't catch a C2 here on the last thing, how do we catch it over here when it's moving around in the environment? Things to enable, command line process auditing, all right? Why do I want to do this? Up here I have an administrative command prompt, okay? I set my execution policy to restrict it. I open up a new command prompt, all right? This is a non-admin command prompt. I'm going to restrict it. I try to do bypass. It tells me permission denied. Oh, man, that stinks. 
Guess what though? We're going to get around stuff. So if I, from a command prompt, say PowerShell, execution policy bypass, guess what happens when I start? Yes. When I start my PowerShell session, if you can see it says PS, PowerShell, ex get execution policy, bypass, just like that. Log your command line. Things to enable, PowerShell logging. Turn all three of these on. Module logging, script block logging, and transcription logging. They're going to PowerShell through your environment, all right? Commodity malware is doing it now. If we don't get up to this level, how are we ever going to get up to the C-sharp level when it's there? That's an example of the MECAS and PowerShell. So make sure we're logging it. We want to log on, we want to audit log on events, success and failures, all right? Log on types are interesting. You have three, which is a network. Uh, five is a service. They were talking about doing services, starting services. Uh, it's interesting sometimes to see that network and clear text. You have different things in here that as you go through threat hunting and stuff, this is especially useful. Maybe you can't actually hunt in this. Maybe you don't have a team to do it, but maybe you can log these. So if you do have to go into a DFIR incident, this will help them tremendously, these logs. Things to deploy, EDR, go beyond antivirus. AV is not cutting it anymore. We need to get to the point that we are actually getting out there. We are looking for new stuff. We are proactively threat hunting. We need to see DLL injections. We need to see stuff like that, all right? We need to see WMI usage. We need to see a list of things that we're not seeing in environments. We need to go, if you can't get an EDR, get Sysmon. I couldn't find a cool Sysmon logo. <laughs> so I went with Windows Insider. And uh, yes, I am spicy. Why? Because we don't have enough EDR out there. We really don't. We need more, OK? If you get Sysmon, go ahead and deploy that sucker, though. Figure out what you need to send, all right? Learn the attacker's playbook. Attack, they set up the whole framework. They have everything you can go in here for. They've logged all the ATPs, tactics, tools, techniques, okay? They've gone in there, they'll tell you what tools they use. Get used to them. Know the offense. The more we know offense, the better we will be at defense. Take some of these tools. See if you can catch them in your environment. That says lateral move it, try to laterally move with that tool. See if you can catch it. If you can't, figure out how. Start hunting. Get an EDR, start hunting, all right? So at the end of the day, we have mission complete. Pen test is always going to be happy. IT director is probably going to be livid because he thought that we were meeting compliance, and compliance was awesome. <laughs> Whew. But the thing is, there's always a way in no matter what we do. As defenders, offensive guys always find a way in, all right? So go ahead, get busy. Get to the next step, figure out how to catch the next level of attacks that are coming. We have to go ahead and sure up on our PowerShell and other things. We have to get to EDR stuff before we can actually start hunting people like, uh, like how they just talked about. We're not there yet. We can't do it because we don't have EDRs deployed. All right? And let me know if y'all have any questions. Uh, we got, uh, what? It's 2.44 now, so. We got like 15 minutes. Any questions? All right, thank y'all for your time.